if you are watching this lesson for the first time, it's very important that you go and watch the first lesson because these lessons are progressive. Uh, so it's very important you go and watch the first lesson. This is the second lesson. Uh, we are continuing. Yesterday we spoke about Ohm's law and we spoke about uh, different formulas which are driven from Ohm's law. So today, um, as the start of this lesson, I just want to emphasize on some of the things that we did uh, yesterday. Remember yesterday we spoke about four principles that are important. The first one, we say that current does not move in an incomplete circuit. Current cannot move when, when the circuit is incomplete, meaning the reading of the current is going to be zero if the uh, circuit is incomplete, right? The second one is that under series, current is the same in all the resistors, right? Uh, but the voltage is not the same because series is a voltage divider, meaning that this resistor uh, uh, does not have the same voltage as this other resistor in series, right? Then in parallel, the current is not the same in different resistors, right? Unlike in series. The second thing, the voltage uh, between two resistors that are parallel is the same, right? Then those are the fundamental uh, principles of um, this uh, topic. So today, I just want to put some emphasis on some of the things that we spoke about. Under series, under series, when we want to calculate the total resistance, let's say this is a, is a circuit, then we've got resistor one, resistor two, you can see they're connected in series. How do we see that the in series is they are following each other, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are following each other, so that we said that is series, they're not parallel. We, we go, right? Yeah. Let's say this one is this resistor for two ohms, this one is for three ohms. Between this one and this one, which one will have a high reading of current? Between two ohms and three ohms, which one will have high reading of current? Two ohms, two ohms right? Yeah. Because current is inversely proportional to resistance. When the resistance is high, current is low and vice versa, right? Yes. Okay, so I just want to put some emphasis. Let's say we want to calculate total resistance. We want to know the total resistance on this circuit. How do, that? How do we do that? We say R taught. This tot stands for total resistance, right? Yeah. It's first to R1 plus R2, R3, R4, depending on how many resistors we have. But uh, in grade 12, the circuit must have a maximum of four uh, resistors. So we're not allowed to teach you five, six resistors. According to the exam guideline, we must have a circuit with four resistors. Uh, then the fifth one can be the internal resistance, which I will teach you today. So under series, if we want to get the total resistance, what we do? We say resistor one plus resistor number two. We are good, right? Okay. I'm explaining that if we want to calculate the total resistance in a circuit, which is uh, the resistors which are connected in series. We say R1 plus R2. If there are three resistors, we even add R3, right? Yes. Listen, I'm saying this connection is in series. There is a difference between series and parallel. Do not take what I'm showing you here in series and you take it to parallel. You will get incorrect information. It is not the same. We are good, right? Okay, so, so when we add the when we want to know the total current in a uh, circuit which have got the resistors which are connected in series, we say R1 plus R2, right? Yes. This is the total resistance. But when we want to find the total resistance, 
in a circuit which is connected in parallel, just like this one. You can see that these two resistors they are what? Parallel, right? Let's say this is 5 ohms. This one is 3 ohms. Ne? Mm. So, if we want to find the total resistance, since this connection is parallel, we will not say that uh, 3 plus 5. It is incorrect. That's not how we do it in parallel connection. In parallel connection, in order for us to calculate the total resistance, the, that total resistance is what we call RP. RP is the what? The total, total, uh, para, I can say total parallel, total parallel resistance. Total parallel resistance. So if we want to come to get the total resistance, we don't add this one and this one, unlike in series. We need to calculate the total parallel resistance. RP, which stands for the total parallel Resistance, right? Okay, how do we do it? We say 1 over Rp is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, 1 over R3 plus 1 over R5. We move like that. R20, we move like that. You understand, right? Then we calculate for this Rp. As I'm telling you here, that Rp is the one. Total parallel resistor. Since these resistors are connected in a parallel connection, if we want to calculate the total resistance in this circuit, we're going to calculate for RP. We're not going to say this resistor plus this resistor. It is going to give us an incorrect answer, as it is incorrect. Understand how we calculate the total resistance under parallel? There's a difference between calculating total resistance in parallel connection and in series connection. In parallel connection, we just calculate the RP. RP is the total parallel resistor. You understand? Yes. Okay, so then we solve using mathematics and we find RP. Because the aim is not to find one of RP. The aim is to find RP, not one of RP. So let's say we want to solve this one. How do we do it? We're going to have 1 over Rp, which is plus 2, which is plus 2, 1 over 3, plus 1 over 5. Then we want to solve for Rp. How do we solve for Rp? I remember I told you how, how do we, uh, how to, to add variables, right? Not variables. How to add the fractions. How to add fractions. When you add fractions, you do what? Cross multiply divided by the numerators multiply together. I know that you can punch this on the calculator, but the problem is a situation whereby you are given RP, you find that RP is 10, you are looking for this R2. You see, if you, you don't know the method of dealing with fractions, you won't be able to get the, 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 the value of R2, for example, here. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Meaning that you need to be able to work out this without the use of a calculator to, uh, to, uh, to avoid the situation whereby you, you are given the RP and you are just looking for the R. You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to have 1 over RP, which is plus 2, as I, I repeat. When we multiply, when we add the fraction, not to multiply, when we add fractions, cross multiply divided by denominators multiplied together. Meaning here we're going to have. Uh, 1 multiplied by 5, 1 multiplied by 5 plus, uh, uh, plus 1 multiplied by 3, right? Yes. Over 3 multiplied by 5, which will give us 1 over Rp is equal to uh, 5 plus 3. 5 plus 3 will give us 8. Will give us eight. Then 3 multiplied by 5, 15. So here, so our we have 1 over Rp, which is first to 8 over 15. 8 over 15. Then we want to, to find the value of Rp. We cross multiply. Then 1 multiplied by 15, 15. 8 multiplied by Rp. Then if we want to get Rp, we divide by 8. We divide by 8. Then Rp is first to 15 divided by 8, which will give us. 
1,875 ohms. So this RP is the what? Total parallel resistor. It means the total resistance in this circuit. It is what? 1,8. You can say 8,9. Well, good, right? 8,8. Eh? 8,8. Eight, eight. Eight, eight. Ohms. 1,88 ohms. That is the total <coughs> resistance in this circuit. You see, someone will just write things which are out of order and say the total resistance is 5 plus 3. You see the difference? You can see how we get the total resistance in a parallel a, a resistor. You understand, right? Yes. Okay. Let me. Okay. You understand this uh, formula? Because there is another one which is very easy, which is say product over uh, the sum. But I don't want to teach you that one to avoid, to avoid confusing you. You understand this mathematical workings, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't want to teach you a lot of workings, a lot of algorithms. Because some of the algorithms can confuse you. We well, are good, right? Okay. Okay. Let me tell you. Can I tell you what RP means? When you calculate for RP, can I tell you what what uh, eventually you are doing in the lambda? This is what you are doing. When you calculate for RP, you know what is it that you are doing? Let me tell you. This is what you are doing. You see these two resistors that what? They are in parallel. Eh? When you calculate for RP, this is what you did. Physicists will fight with me because uh, this is actually my mind. No one told me. I've never read it on anyway, but I know it is true. So physicists, you can fight me. Uh, it is true what I'm showing you. You see, we have two resistors, right? Yeah. When you come with RP, you know what you did? You made these two resistors to become one thing, and they are they they become in series. They become in series with the. Uh, battery and everything. So you make these two to be one. And what is the, the value of the resistance here? Is the value that we got. Project was 1,8, 8, 8, right? 1,88 8, 8 ohms. This is what we did. You see, when you you make, uh, you calculate the RP, what did you do? You have made the, all those parallel resistors to become one resistor, which is going to be in service with everything. You understand? Okay. 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 Someone said this. Okay. Let's say we have this. Let me show you something. Are we good? You see the voltage that is here. The voltage that is here is different from the voltage that is here, right? Yeah. You understand? So this is what we do. Let's check the current that's, that is here. The current that is in this uh, resistor. Net. I is equals to 2. Uh, let me say 0, 0,3. In this resistor, in this resistor, uh, we've got the current which is 0, 0,3. We're good, right? Yes. So, we know that the current that is here, it is not going to be the same as the current that is here, right? Mm -hmm. Because these two, they are what? They are parallel, right? Mm -hmm. So, if we calculate the RP, you know what we're doing? This is what we're doing. <laughs> Let me show you by representing. Isn't it where this resistor here? We have this resistor, right? Yeah. If we calculate for RP as we have already calculated, we calculate for RP, we make these two resistors to become one thing, which is RP, right? This is what we do. And this resistor is, it, it, it is 1,88 as we have calculated for RP for these two. We have calculated for RP, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning that the current that is going to be recorded here at the resistor which is 1,88 it is going to become what? it is going to become 0, 0,3 it is going to be the same as this one because now this RP is now in service with this resistor are you understanding what I mean? Yeah, yeah. these are the intentions when you come back for RP you fuse all those resistors that are parallel into one resistor which is going to be uh, in service with the other resistors that are connected in service. You understand what I mean? Yeah. These are the intention. It's like something behind. Something behind. When you calculate for RP, you did this. You understand, right? Yeah. Okay. Meaning that we can now uh, 
move forward. Okay, now we can go into details to the interpretation of an electric uh, circuit. We can go into details of an interpretation of an electric circuit. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to the section whereby I want us to just look at the situation whereby we are interpreting an electric circuit. Because we need to interpret the electric circuit. Okay. Let's say uh, we have this electric circuit. Huh? This electric circuit. Let's say we have this electric circuit, which have got uh, A, uh, which is like that. Can you see this electric circuit? Yeah. It have got uh, the, the battery, is, it's 2 volt, right? The current is uh, 0, 0,2, 0, 0,2 amperes. Isn't it, this is an, an A meter? Okay, let's interpret, right? The total energy that this battery is going to supply in this scenario is how much? Two volts. I know you are watching and uh, you are surprised that the information that I'm teaching do not have internal resistance yet. Is that uh, we are working like an onion. Well, I'm taking this thing uh, in order. We don't want to introduce internal resistance and we confuse anyone. After knowing how to interpret an electric circuit, that's then we can in introduce an internal resistance. Because the internal resistance is it, it's just something simple. So don't be confused. Just follow to understand this. Then we'll introduce the internal resistance later. Okay. Who's that, guys? <laughs> Okay, let us take a look at this electric circuit. I want to ask you, I want to ask you, this is a resistor, right? Yes. This is R1, this is R2. Let's start with a simple uh, interpretation. What is the current that is being read here? It's 0, 0,2, right? What about the current that is here? It's 0, 0,2, right? Yes. Because this is a series connection. The current is the same at any point. Okay. We know that this battery delivers 2 volts, right? Yeah. Tell me, what is the voltage that is read here? Is it 2? Yes. Is it 2? No. It is not 2. Because a service is a volt divider. It does not mean that if a battery is delivering 2 volts, here we're going to have 2 and here we're going to have a 2 but this is what is going to happen the voltage that is going to be recorded here, right? and we add it with the voltage that is going to be uh, 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 here, recorded here then when we sum them, we must get 2 volts this is the total voltage across this electric circuit, right? Yeah. but it does not mean that here we've got 2, even here we've got 2, we've got two. no that two is divided according to the ratio of the resistance. You understand, right? Yeah. We're, we're, we're moving with the interpretation. This is something very difficult to teach because it occurs in your mind. And I'm not sure if it is happening in your mind. Because I'm teaching you to interpret and they will not ask you the questions that I'm asking, I'm asking, but you need to know them in order for you to get the correct answer for any question that they will ask you. We are good, right? Yeah. If it, here it is 2 volt, it does not mean that here we have got 2 volt even here. Service is a current? Divide. No, it's not a current divide. It's a voltage divider. We are good, right? Yes. Okay, that was the first um, interpretation, right? Okay. Okay. If we are given R1 and R2, right? If we are given R1 and, and R2, the current that is at R1 and the current that is at R2 is the same. Okay. Let me just give you this. Let me give you this. We're just uh, learning how to interpret 
this second. Here is a second. Can you see the second? You, you can see the second, right? Yeah. Can you see the second, right? Yeah. It is in parallel connection, right? Yeah. Tell me, the current that is here, is it 0 0,2 amperes? It is not, right? Yeah. But if we can add the current that is here, the current that is here, and the current that, that is here, what is, uh, what is the value that we're going to get? 0, 0, 0, 0,2. Because 0, 0,2 is the what? Is the total current. You understand? Yes. So, so let me just explain. This is just a simple analogy that will make you understand. As yesterday, I've told you that you can understand this electric circuit. You can uh, liken it to water in the pipe, water that is circulating, right? Let's say we say the current is moving from here. The battery is going to drive the charges. The charges are going to move in this direction. Some charges, you know what they will do? They will enter here, right? Others will pass. Others will enter here, right? Other charges will pass. Then they pass. So the charges which enter here, they will meet with the charges that enter here. They move like that and they they meet again here. Then all the charges or the current that was here, 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 it is going to be gathered somewhere here. Do you agree? Yeah. Then here, the reading that is here is the same reading as it is here. But the reading that is here, it is different from the reading that is here. Do you agree? Yeah. The reading that is here, it is the same reading as the one that is here. Do you agree? Yeah. Because like water, which is being circulated in the village, it, it is going to be distributed from a single reservoir, right? Yeah. Then that reservoir will do what? Will cause um, um, water to supply this other part of the village. And the water is going to be supplied to this other part of the village, right? So you can think about this in that way. Current is going to move, another amount of current is going to enter here, right? You agree? Yes. Another amount is going to enter here, another amount is going to enter here. So the current that will pass through here, it is the same current that will be recorded here, for example. You understand? Yes. Meaning that if I can put an emitter here, this emitter will have the same reading as the emitter that I can put directly to the resistor here. Do you understand this interpretation? Yes. Then the current that is here is the total current because uh, 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 this reading that is here is the same reading as the reading that is here. You understand what is happening, right? Yeah. That is interpretation. I'm not sure if what I want to occur uh, in your mind is occurring. Because as I'm demonstrating this, I want something to happen in your mind. Let's hope it is happening. I hope even you viewers, there is something happening in your mind as I'm saying this. Because now we are talking interpretation. Well, good, right? Okay. Let's just do one last part. I can, I can say we have a resistor. Then we have this resistor. Like that. We have uh, the resistor. Then let, let us put this one here. Uh -huh. Then we have another one here. We are good, right? We are good. Then here, let us put a voltmeter. We put a voltmeter. Then let us put a voltmeter here. Are we good? We are good, right? Yeah. Then let us put a what? A voltmeter here. You can see this electric circuit, right? It is not complicated, guys. No, this is just a, a volt meter. As I told you that I came with a multimeter. Let's take this board. You see this board, the corners of the board. Let's say I'm having an electric circuit, right? With uh, connections. If I take this a multimeter, meaning the multimeter can be a voltmeter, I can just take it to the uh, volt whereby it is going to measure the voltage. Then, 
if I make the connection, this is an analogy, guys, it's an example, it's not real things. I just want you to understand. If I connect this uh, voltmeter to one part of the water, to one resistor just like here, this, this thing is not part of the circuit, right? Yes. It is not part of the circuit. It's just there to measure the what the voltage. This is what I did. You understand? This is a what? This is a circuit. Then from this resistor, I put my what? My voltmeter just like this. So this drawing, this drawing, it's when I put this voltmeter just like this. You understand? You understand what is happening? So I know you can get confused. You say current is going to move. What? No. So this is like. Can you come? Can someone come? Come, man. Come. <laughs> Just hold me. <laughs> okay. You see what I'm holding? This is a second, right? This is a second, right? This is a second. This is a resistor. What do I do? I connect my voltmeter in. This representation is the same as what I'm doing. So this V, you see this V? Is the number that is going to be red here. That is going to appear here. You understand? When I do this, a particular voltage number is going to appear. So this V is the same thing as what I'm doing. This line, they represent the same thing. You understand what is happening? You can sit down. Thank you. Okay. So, so now, now, let's say I'm saying that the total voltage, you see here, this is the total, it is the total voltage, right? Let's say I'm saying the total current, the total current is 0 0.4, is 0 0.3, is 0 0.3 amperes. You can see, right? Tell me, the current that is going to be recorded here, it is going to be? The current that, is, that will be recorded here, it is going to be how much? It is going to be 0 0.3 because this one is in service with this. Do you understand? Yes. This one is in service with this, right? Yes. What about this one? Is it this stuff and this one? So when we calculate for RP, we make everything, we make this to be in service. Then it means the reading that we, that we uh, have, the RP value that we're going to get, that the resistance for RP, RP resistance, it is going to express this total current because it is now uh, going to be in service. I hope I'm not confusing anyone because what I'm showing here is to interpret an electric circuit. Do you understand, guys? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, okay, let's say we want to calculate RP for this one. Let's say this one is 2 ohms, this one is 1 ohms. Then this one is 4 ohms. How do we calculate for RP when we have a situation like this? Understand? This is how we do it. You must not forget, this one is in service with this. These two that are in service, they are not parallel, right? Yeah. Meaning that we're going to say 1 over RP is plus to 1 over R1 plus 1 over plus 1 over R2. Then 1 over RP is plus to 1 over R1, let us make it to be 4, plus 1 over R2. You know what is R2? R2 is both of them. R2 is both of them. It is not only this one. If we can say 1 over 2 plus 1, uh, 1 over 1, we will be wrong. Why? Because these two, they are not parallel. They are series. Remember, the total resistance in series, it is R1 plus R2. Meaning that the total resistance for this one is going to be R1 plus R2. Are you understanding? Yeah. So it means for this one, I'm going to say 1 over 2 plus 1. We have made this one. In other words, we made this two. You see, to become one resistor. To become one resistor. Which is what? Which is 3? Which is 3? Which is 3 ohms. Which is in parallel with that. I hope you, I'm making someone to understand how to interpret. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Okay. Mm. Uh, here we've got what? Two. Here we've got one. Okay. 
there's a question. Let us uh, hear the uh, question. Okay. Okay. Uh, guys, uh, our, someone raised the question that what about this resistor? Is it not in parallel with these two? It is correct. This resistor it is in parallel with these two, meaning that here we need to extend our formula plus one over R, R3. Uh, remember, I'm just giving these numbers. Let me make this one to become two ohms. Meaning that here we're going to have one over one over two. Just to clear this resistor is in parallel with these two and also in parallel with these two. So I hope now we are, we are fine. Meaning that the voltage that is here is the same voltage that is here and it is the same voltage as the sum of the voltages of these two. So there was a mistake. This uh, resistor is in parallel with this one. It is also in uh, parallel with this one. But what I wanted to emphasize here was to show you that when we have two resistors that are in series but they are parallel with something else, we need to add these two as the um, R total for series is R1 plus R2. Then we deal with this as we did here. So, yeah, thank you. That's what I wanted to clear. Okay, thank you. Okay. And let me clear the confusion that I caused in myself. This resistor and this one and this one, they are parallel. Not only these two, all of them, they are parallel. So what do you remember? I told you that when we calculate for RP, we remove all the resistors that are parallel and we make them to be in series with the wall circuit, right? Meaning that if for if we calculate for RP here, if we calculate for RP here, what is it that we are doing? It means we have removed everything that was in a parallel. We have removed everything that was in parallel. Then we make everything to be in series and then this resistor it will become RP. So by making the calculation of RP, we remove all those three resistors that, that were parallel and we made them to be in service. Meaning that the reading of the current for this RP that we, we, we would have calculated here, it is the same reading as the 0, 0,3 as the one that is in this service. Uh, I mean as the one uh, as uh, the one that is in this resistor or in this uh, ammeter. So when we calculate for RP, we make all the resistors to be in series. That's why here I wrote RP. This is what we are doing. I hope uh, you understand uh, out there. I do not confuse anyone. So I hope the confusion is clear. Uh, my apologies. This resistor that was here in your drawing, and the one, the second one, and the third one, they are all in parallel. So thank you. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are done with the, the interpretation of an electric circuit from the uh, teacher's perspective, from the teaching method of the uh, teacher orientated. Because now it is only me who is talking in the class. So after this method of teaching of teacher orientated, uh, after I have given learners the content, then we'll deal with the learner orientated. We're going to have questions, learners are going to show what they um, grasp from the teacher orientated, then we'll move like that. So now we're still in the teacher uh, orientated teaching method. It is me who is talking alone just to revise with the learners everything. Then I'm going to put in the learners uh, later on. Then until we finish the topic, the lesson will be focusing on the learners. But now, it is me alone who is talking. Okay, now, I just want us to revise a power. A power. There is a section whereby we talk about a power in this topic of the electric circuit. They will ask you to define power. 
You remember that you already know what power is since we have already done uh, power on that topic of work energy and power. So even in the electric circuit, they can request you to define what is power. What is power, guys? Miranda? The rate at which work is done. The rate, work, the rate at which work is done. So you define power the same way you define it in work energy and power. The rate at which work is done. So with power, we just drive some formulas. Then uh, we'll be done. Okay. So this, these are the formulas uh, for power which you need to know. Uh, some of them, they do not provide them in the... They don't provide them in the, um, the formula sheet. They don't. So this is what you need to do. Do not claim any formula. Don't claim any formula. You just know one main formula and you are able to find all other formulas through this derivation that I will show you derivation of a formula. You understand, right? Okay. As I'm saying that, all you need to do is to um, understand the, this derivation. So, power is given by Vi. Power is the product of the voltage multiplied by the current. Right? Yeah. Okay. From Ohm's law, from Ohm's law, we produce this triangle yesterday. V, I, R. Yeah. So now we want to derive this formula. So for power, what you need to know is this formula. This formula can produce any formula that you want, right? Let us do that. Meaning that from this formula, using this Ohm's law and this uh, formula, we can have this. What is a uh, voltage? How do you calculate the, the voltage using this? We just know the voltage, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning that the voltage is I multiplied by R. Then we have I. Where do we get this I? Is this I V? We just replace V using this. V is I multiplied by R. That's why we have this. You understand? Yeah. Then power is plus two. I is going to multiply I R. Meaning that we're going to have I squared R. So this is the, the second formula for power. You see, it's I squared multiplied by R, the second formula. It's not difficult, right? No. So they may not provide uh, you with this in the formula sheet. So you don't need to claim it, you just need to know how to work. So it's the, it's the same as Ohm's law. P is plus two, I squared, R. We just wrote the first formula. Let me show you the second one. We are good, right? Second one for power, the second one for power, we're going to have power is plus to V. Then let us uh, replace I using uh, Ohm's law. I is V over R. So we're going to have V over R, meaning that power will give us V multiplied by V over R. This will give us V squared over R. So this is the derivation of the formula of power. So meaning that power is first to V square over R. You understand, you understand right? Yeah. So this is how we calculate for, for power. P stands for power. We're just moving. So now we're about to introduce the internal resistance, the greater electric circuit, the information that we just add from what we already know.